backward chaining with leaps ahead. Which some, maybe they leaps backwards. I don't know. And don't get too detailed on it. Anyway, so backwards chaining. It's a, where you have a complex skill, right? A skill that involves a bunch of little skills, right? So putting on your clothes is a back, it, it is a, is a, is a chain, if you will, right? So you got all sorts of things you got to put on. So if you were going to teach someone that chain, you would use one procedure called backward chaining, right? Which is where you as the teacher do all of the work for the learner except the last step. And then the next time you do it, they let the learner do the last two steps. And the next time you do it, you let the learner do the last three steps. So on, so forth. Well, backward chaining with leaps ahead is where you go, oh, wow, this little person seems to be catching on quickly. Let's skip a few of those steps, right? So you go, all right, so the first time we'll do Avery this time. Actually, let's pick on Jacob. We don't pick on him too often. So uh, little Jacob's we're teaching him to put on his clothes. I do all the work. He does the last step. And then he goes, I think I got this. I'm like, all right, let's give it a shot. Let's really try it, right? So, all right, I'll do the first step. You do the other 17. Really big jump, right? Um, so, and if it works, great. You did backward chaining with leaps ahead. The big point here, I don't know why I'm doing this, but anyway, the big point here is that you need to pay attention to your learner, right? If you are sensitive to what your learner's doing and what they may be able to achieve, then you might be able to speed up the chaining process, right? So this is a very useful tool, but it, all, it always involves you being highly attentive to the behaviors of the person you're working with.